Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Monday, June 24th, 2019. Our solar wind speeds are sitting at 323.3 kilometers per second with a density of 5.3. Our sun is still blank, but there is an active region that we are focusing in on right now. We will have an update on this during tonight's live show. We now have 36 days without sunspots. That makes 109 now for 2019 without sunspots. Take a look at our KP indices and we are at a one with a 24 hour max of a two and looking at the SDO in motion according to spaceweather.com a stream of solar wind is expected to graze Earth's magnetic field on June 25th or June 26th causing geomagnetic activity just below the level of a G1 class storm and taking this from spaceweather.com rare red noctilucent clouds noctilucent clouds are supposed to be electric blue yet during the extreme noctilucent cloud outbreak of June 1st, some observers in Europe saw a different color, red. What creates this color? The answer is ozone, or rather lack thereof. Research in the 1970s revealed that much of the sunlight hitting noctilucent clouds first passes through Earth's ozone layer. Ozone absorbs red light while allowing blue to pass, hence the usual color of the clouds. When the sun is hanging very low, however, reddened sunlight refracted through the dense troposphere can paint the tops of the noctilucent clouds red, overwhelming the usual ozone blue. And now now here's Mari. Thanks, Jake. Indonesia has been hit by a series of earthquakes within hours of each other, the strongest registering a massive 7.5 according to reports. The two latest earthquakes hit the village of Sumlaki on the island of Yamdana. The most recent of those registered, a magnitude 5.2, is the latest in the series of quakes to strike Indonesia over the past few hours. The 5.2 magnitude quake struck at 12 28 local time. Before that tremor, a 7.5 quake hit the islands, registering at a depth of 129 miles, that's 208 kilometers. Although no tsunami warning was put in place, the tremors were felt in the Australian city of Darwin. Offices and high-rise buildings in the city were evacuated. An eyewitness said it was so strong, everyone panicked and ran through the emergency exit stairs. They were on the eighth floor. So yeah, but I never felt anything like it. I've lived here just about all my life. I've never felt anything like that. It's the most intensive one I can remember. Another said it lasted over a minute with long shaking that became more intense as time went on. The Bureau of Meteorology said there was no tsunami threat to Australia. Panicked Australians read the quakes took place on the Australian territories, but some were quick to flag how the quakes took place over 700 miles away. Um, we were just in the shops and the shop started shaking and all the clothes and jewellery started shaking in the shop, so it was a bit weird. The closest major city to the quake's epicenter is the city of Jayapura, which borders Papua New Guinea. As of yet, there has been no reports of casualties or damage to buildings, although due to the remoteness of this area, news of damage usually takes some time to come in. As always, we'll keep you updated on the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Please tune in tonight for our live show at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you're subscribed and please show your support by giving us a like and a share. Thank you for tuning into the Grand Solar Minimum channel.